What's up everyone? Today we're going to be going through the top 20 best ever AFL games that I've been to. This is in follow-up of my last video where I went through the top 20 worst games. So if you haven't checked that out, feel free to do so as well. It's basically going to be in a pretty similar format, although in the top 20 worst videos, I basically just did St Kilda games. In this video, it will include the best St Kilda wins, but also the best neutral games I've been to. So obviously there'll be a bit of St Kilda bias in this. Some of the close Saints games will be a little higher than probably what others may think. And I will also include some other games that aren't necessarily close related to the Saints. And most of you guys wanted to see a mixture as well. Before anything else, real quick, I want to address that uh, if anyone was on my stream last night, you would have seen that I was botted badly of over a thousand subs. We ended up on like 38.5k, which is a lot more than what we should be on. I worked overtime in getting that sorted. I think there was a bit of an overreaction in the chat from myself and others. Some were saying that the channel was going to get terminated. Everything's all sorted now, which is good, at least for now. I think we should be fine. Alrighty, like in the last list, we'll be going through five honorable mentions, and we'll also be going from 2009 onwards. So remember, anything before then, I did still go to games, but I don't remember much, so it's no point. We'll start with the first game, and this was in 2021, where the Saints won by 20 points, 102 to 82 against the Eagles. And this is a period of footy where we played like crap. Honestly, that Essendon game I mentioned in the last video, we just came off that game. And we're down by 35 points in the third quarter against a pretty good West Coast side. Not expected to win, and out of nowhere, we just found a way to get the win. Big comeback, ran over the top of West Coast. Number two, we've got the first neutral game. And remember, I only started going to neutral games properly after COVID. This is Collingwood Adelaide in 2023. Was not expecting much out of this game. I just got invited, to be honest. I ended up getting there almost at half time because I was that late because of the bus replacements. And Pies were up by five goals. But Adelaide Storm with a great comeback in the second half. And it made such a fierce, intense final quarter. I really wanted the Crows to win, but the uh, you could say they were robbed in that game. Speaking of Collingwood, another honourable mention also in 2023 against the Cats round one. First game I went to that year, and it was one of the best. It was a really good game, high quality, high scoring, many big moments. For example, you know, the Ollie Henry when he got tackled in the square, or when Jeremy Howe got injured. Pies proved himself against, at the time, the Premiership favourites, the reigning Premiers by 22 points. That set them up for the rest of the year. And I remember I was sitting in great seats, and I wanted Collingwood to win from the start because I tipped them. The next game was in 2021, also round one, when the Saints beat the Giants in an eight-point win at uh, NG Stadium or Giants Stadium, whatever it was called back then. Even though the Saints were in good form heading into the season, not many people thought they were going to win considering they had so many outs. The Giants were expected to be a lot better, especially at home. Just about one of the best interstate wins I've been to. Just such a hard-fought win. And it was the first interstate game in like five years that I went to as well. And the final game was actually one of the first neutral games I've ever been to. Gold Coast v West Coast in 2015. It was a draw. Uh, we went to this game because we were in the Gold Coast for a holiday for a, for a week. We figured we'd go up to this game. Didn't think it was going to be great because at the time the Eagles were second. The Suns were 17th. But somehow it ended up being a draw in one of the craziest games of the season. Alrighty guys, let's head into the official top 20 list. The first game was in 2023 when the Saints beat the Swans by 14 points at the SCG. This is probably my favorite in-state game I've been to in terms of a Saints win because it was a big upset on a Thursday night. Fought back after three-quarter time when we were down and uh, the celebrations and the cheer squad when I was there, I did meet up with a few subscribers as well. It was such a great night on a Thursday. Didn't expect it. It also broke a 20-plus year long drought of uh, winning at the SCG for the Saints. I know for the majority of the list, it's going to be only just based on the game, but this is a lot more to do with the experience. It was on my birthday, drinking beers, with content creators, it was wet, which made it better. And just the amount of entertainment and craziness that occurred on the hill that night was probably something that will never happen again. I mean, Gather Around this year was good. The only reason that's not on the list is because I didn't remember it that Saturday night. But I remember this game. The result, I don't remember it too much. It wasn't the closest of all games, but damn, it was such a good experience to be a part of. And that's the only reason why it's made the list. Now, speaking of Gather Around, this game is in 2024, an 18th spot. We have Fremantle and Carlton, where the Dockers lost by 10 points. This is such a good game. You know, such a good rivalry these two clubs have than Freo and Carlton. And it just went down to the wire. The Dockers were up late. I was only cheering on the Blues because I had a Blues mate next to me, but I'll sing around quite a few mates. I remember it was the pre-show to the Saturday night game, and I remember I was uh, having a few beverages that uh, did get me a bit spiked up later in the night. But um, as a neutral, it's just such a fantastic game. The Dockers were robbed, though. The Dockers were robbed, but despite that, I still went off my head when the Blues won in the final sign. It was a great night. In 17th, we have a game where the Saints won by 110 points against the Bombers in 2015. Now, Obviously, for anyone else, this wouldn't really be ranked too highly because it's a big smashing, but it's a St. Kilda smashing. That's my team. And it was against Essendon. 
we all know that I don't like the Bombers and uh, it was just, yeah, a great experience to be a part of. Um, I just didn't expect to win like that. I don't even think the Saints were favourites. It was awesome to see us tear apart the Bombers in that game and I don't think I've been to a game with one by 100 plus since that moment. In its 16th spot, we have in 2024, Collingwood and Carlton. This is the first game between the two sides and this is the game I actually rode to as part of the travel video and uh, it was such a great atmosphere, honestly. I was up in level four with a few other content creators. There were heaps of lead changes. You couldn't really pick a winner all game. And then the finish of Nick Dacos kicking that goal from the pocket with minutes to go. Definitely the best Collingwood Carlton game I've been to, but I think that might change if you uh, wait a little bit long on the list. 15th spot, we have St Kilda and Richmond in 2017, where the Saints won by 67 points. Now, normally this wouldn't have been included on the list, but I mean, Richmond in 27, they won the flag. They were considered a pretty good side at the time. But we absolutely belted them. The scoreline was one of the craziest scorelines I've ever seen, not just for a Saints game, but just in general. 92 to 10 were the scores. You know, that's on level with how crazy the scores were in the Port Adelaide Sydney game earlier this season. Like, we just completely smashed them. The fact that we smashed the side that won the flag that year by 67 points in Maddie's match. I think we made it to the eight at that point in the season. Oh, it was so good to be a part of. Now, another game that the Saints won by quite a bit. This is in 2013, where the Saints smashed the Dockers by 71 points. Now, the result probably wouldn't suggest it, but there are many reasons why this is up there. It started off before the game. I remember in the AFL playground, just minding my own business, trying to win a few packs of footy cards, and then some random guy comes up to my dad and was like, does your son want to be on the ground before the game? And of course I said yes, and I had the chance to win a really cool signed Guernsey. In fact, I can, I think I can find it real quick. Uh, this is the signed Guernsey that I won in 2013. This is before the game. I remember I had to do a little mini goal kicking challenge. I won even though I kick like crap. Big smashing. The Saints completely demolished the Dockers in so many areas of disposals. In that game, that was actually the record for most disposals by any side in a game of footy. I think we scored over 500 disposals. It was also the game where we had retirees of Jason Blake, Justin Kaczynski, Stephen Milne. That last five minutes when we were you know, feeding the ball to Kaczynski and we wanted him to get that goal. And then it was disallowed. It was so unfortunate, but it was such a great day at the office. I know the Dockers had a lot of players rested. But they finished first that season, though, and we finished 16th. In 13th spot, we have St Kilda Melbourne 2015 at Marvel Stadium. What a game this was. Uh, I remember this is at a stage where the Saints just kept on beating the Ds. They had, like, a ridiculous streak where they just keep on winning against the Ds. And it was about to be broken because in the end of the game, like, with a minute to go, Jeremy Howe kicks a goal. 41 seconds on the clock. The Ds are in front by four points. And then we win the center clearance through Jack Steven. He delivers it inside 50. And Lee Montagna, with 20 seconds to go, kicks it from the goal square. And we hit the lead again. It was such a crazy ending to that game. Probably one of the craziest endings I've been to free. Not just a Saints game, any game in general. Now, 12th spot, we have the second Carlton Collingwood game. I did say I was going to feature the second one because I did go to this game not that long ago. It was only like a couple weeks ago for Scott Penderbury's 400th game. Now, whilst the atmosphere was incredible, I probably expected the crowd to be a little bit better. I remember the first half I was sitting with quite a lot of Collingwood fans and uh, they had a good start to the game. And then I moved somewhere else. Haz and Lenny were there. The Blues were down by as much as, I think, 30 points. They saw him back late, but they couldn't get it done. Even though Mitch McGovern had that chance to win the game after the signing, he screwed up the kick. But just the craziness of events that occurred during that game was unbelievable, honestly. Probably, yeah, definitely the best Carlton Collingwood game I've been to and one of the best neutral games I've been to in the home and away season. Next up as well, we have in 2024, we have Anzac Day between the Bombers and the Pies. This was... Uh, a crazy game. It finished a draw, which is only the second draw to occur in um, Anzac Day history. I remember the Bombers, they got off to a really fast start. Jamie Elliott took the mark, what I think will be mark of the year, but we won't know until, I guess, later on. And uh, just so many great moments occurred in the game. I really wanted Essendon to win. I tipped them. They had a chance late. I think it was Langford, but he missed it. It was such a weird feeling afterwards because I've been to draws, but not draws um, like that with a uh, 90k plus at the MCG. It feels so weird. Now we're getting to the top 10, and to start things off with the number 10th spot, we have Collingwood and Melbourne in 2023, the qualifying final where the Pies got up by seven points. Now it was a final, so it has to be elevated a little bit. I think this might be the first final on the list, and it was a great final, to be honest. The quality was fierce. They had the Braden Maynard hit with Brayshaw. The skills weren't actually that great, and especially Melbourne, their kicker was atrocious. I remember Bailey Fritch had multiple chances late and, and just blew it. I was with a lot of Collingwood fans as well, so the atmosphere was uh, yeah, definitely a top, probably three game when it comes to atmosphere, and it was one of the better finals of 2023 as well. In nine spot, we have St Kilda and Geelong in 2016, where the 
the Saints won by three points. This was during a period where the Saints were pretty crap. Obviously, the Cats were dominant in every year that I've been alive in, but 2016, at that stage, they were first. We were expected to win quite easily, and it was during a stage where the Saints just hadn't beaten the Cats in quite a while. I don't think since 2010. Didn't expect a win, but we played out of our skins early. I remember the Cats brought it back late, and then Gresham kicked that winning goal with uh, not too long to go from the pocket. I vividly remember that. I was uh, yeah, sitting in my normal member seats, and when I saw it go in, I was like, oh my god, could we actually beat the Cats who were first on the ladder? We beat them by three points. And considering I don't like the Cats, it was such a satisfying close win. In eighth spot, I have Anzac Day 2023. Now, I know it wasn't as close. Uh, the Pies won by 13 points. But I think the game was a little bit better for a few reasons. For, for one, it was my first Anzac Day game I went to. So, you know, I was always wanting to go to an Anzac Day game. The fact that I got to go there for the first time, seeing all the pregame stuff, the, uh, the last post, all that, that was really cool. And uh, the Bombers were up by, I think, five goals at one stage at three-quarter time. The crowd was also unbelievable. It's over 95,000, the most for any Antic that game, and the second most ever in home and away history. And it was such a good game. I remember the last quarter, Collingwood stormed home. They kicked heaps of goals. Nick Dacos won the medal. In seventh spot on the list, a game in 2024 where the Saints beat the Swans by two points. It has to be included. If I wasn't a Saints fan, it would still be in the top 20. It was a really good game of footy. Now, obviously, the Swans this year have been really good. But this is during a time when they had that really good streak. They only just lost to Freya the week before. But everyone tipped them to beat us. I think only 2% tipped the Saints. Me being one of them, we were down by 30 points halfway through the third quarter. Thought that there was no chance of winning. We then kicked five goals in a row and then stormed home in that last quarter kicking four goals to nothing and mcdonald had that chance like in the free game to win the game late i thought he kicked it but he missed it and just getting to beat first place on the ladder that reaction oh, it was probably the best winning feeling for a home and away st kilda game And sixth spot, we have a qualifying final in 2022 between Geelong and Collingwood. Yeah, I believe this was the most heavily anticipated final of this week of the finals, and it definitely lived up to the expectations. I really wanted a ticket, and I somehow got some through Henshi. The atmosphere was extraordinary. The game was one of the fiercest and closest finals I've been to. The pressure was so elite. Maxi Holmes kicking the winner with a couple minutes to go, and the Cats held on by six points. And it was uh, probably the best ever final I've been to that didn't involve the Saints. In number five, we have the dream time of the G-Clash in 2023, where the Bombers beat the Tigers by one point in a crazy game. One of the craziest finishes I've certainly been a part of. It was my first game that I've been to in Dreamtime. I remember I was sitting there with bit of footy. Once again, I wanted the Bombers to win because they were sort of the underdogs. You know, I tipped them leading into it. And at that point, I don't think they had beat Richmond in like 11 or 12 games. So they had a really bad losing streak against the Tigers. They kicked a few goals late. And then Durham with like 15 seconds ago, marked in the goal square, kicked the goal. And it was such an unbelievable finish. The Bombers fans went crazy. And I went crazy. I remember I vlogged the game. If you want to check it, that is up on the channel. But bloody hell, that was an insane game of footy. In fourth spot, we have another game in 2023 involving the Bombers. And this was probably just a little bit better due to the finish. It was obviously Essendon and Port Adelaide. 2023, the Dan Houston goal after the siren. This is the only game I've ever been to where I've witnessed a play kick a goal after the siren to win the game. I didn't really expect the game to be that great. I remember I just went to the game for the sake of it. I mean, UK was in Melbourne. There were a few other people. We figured, why not? Port Adelaide cheer squad. Zay Burnell was also there. And then our reaction when the shot was taken after the siren. And then the reaction when we actually did see the ball travel over and just missed the, uh, the Essendon player's fingers was absolutely insane. It honestly took ages for that result to properly sink in considering I've never been to a game like that before. And just the, the scenes after the game were incredible. I, I was going off my head, even though I didn't support any sides. Now we head to the top three and these three games are all St. Kilda games, but uh, they're, they're good St. Kilda games. There are reasons why they're in the top three. We start with St. Kilda Western Bulldogs 2015. This was the fifth biggest comeback of all time. I think this is deserving to be put on this list. It was the Saints greatest ever comeback. We were down by 55 points. Early in the third quarter, it was against a pretty good dogs lineup who were expected to be, yeah, winning the game. I remember we sat level one on the wing, first half, complete garbage, we thought at halftime. Fuck it, we'll move to the cheer squad, why not? We went near the cheer squad. I think we actually went inside the cheer squad, and damn, it was such a good decision to do that because the Saints had one of the great turnarounds of any game of all time. A 55-point comeback, we just kept surging goals. Billings kicked that uh, the late-game match winner. This is when he kicked four, and we thought Billings was going to be an absolute star. And the Saints held on to win by 7 points against the Bulldogs. I've been down by 55. I think I watched that replay a good 3 or 4 times. Like, that was incredible. Number 2 on the list, we have a game in 2010 where the Saints won by 4 points in a qualifying final against the Cats. We weren't heading into this game as favourites. The Cats were the better side that year. I remember that for sure. And I remember heading in via the train thinking, hopefully we at least make up a good fight. Because I just didn't expect us to win. 
and it was, I remember it being a wet game at the MCG, I remember it being pretty close for well, all of it really, and then I remember with a couple minutes left to go on the clock, Cameron Ling kicked a goal that would have put the Cats in front had it not have been disallowed, but because Cameron Mooney pushed James Quill in the back, it was disallowed and the Saints went on to hold on, and that was the only reason the Saints ended up playing in the grand final that year, because if we didn't win that game, we would have, I think, had to play the Pies in a prelim that year, but we went to play the Dogs the following couple weeks in a prelim, we made the grand final, but just that qualifying final, the thrillingness of the ending, couldn't believe it when that goal was disallowed. I thought when Ling kicked that goal, fuck, game was over. And now that leaves only one more spot for the number one place, and this was in 2009 when the Saints beat the Bulldogs by seven points in the preliminary final. Even though this was like 15 years ago, I still knew how significant a game like this was at the time. It was probably the, the most tense I've actually been properly at a game in the last quarter. I remember I think John Tricuza, not too long to go on the game, had a chance to win it. He missed. I was like, holy crap. And then Nick Rewalt, with only like a minute to go, kicks it from the ground. He soccers it through. We held on to win by seven points against the Bulldogs, who were fast and attacking. Holy crap. The feeling of elation when we won that game. Because I knew how good it meant. I was only six years old, but I knew that was to get into a grand final. I wasn't stupid. I knew we hadn't been in a grand final in a while. I definitely remember the day after that game. I think I watched the replay like two times in the morning with my parents. And uh, then it was my dad's birthday, so we had you know, birthday celebration. It was such a good weekend. It was such a nostalgic week. And, and I think because of the high stakes of that game, it's pretty deserving to be in that number one spot. And there might be a few people wondering why I didn't include the uh, Geelong Saints game during round 14 of 2009. I didn't actually get to go to that game, which really pissed me off. My grandma had a birthday on and apparently I wasn't allowed to go, so I just watched it on TV. But yeah, that is the list for my best games. I thought I'd had to include the neutral games, but also Saints wins. So I was never going to include a Saints loss. If you have a list yourself down below, I want to hear it. What are the best games you've been to? Do you remember any of these games on this list? A few of these games were recent because I've obviously been to quite a lot more games over the last few years. Leave some more suggestions for some video ideas that could be similar to this that you'd like to see me do. But until then, we'll see you soon in my next video.